Hey everyone, Random Randy here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make what I'm calling the Ultimate Essential Slouch Beanie. The tools that you will need to make this hat are as follows. You will need some worsted weight yarn. In this case, I am using Deborah Norville's Everyday Yarn. It is an anti-pilling acrylic from the Premier Company. I really like the drape that it has and the different colors you can get are absolutely beautiful. This particular color is called Northern Lights. Aside from that, you will also need a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook or a K hook. I'm using this cheapy ergonomic handled one, but I also really like my Susan Bates hooks. You will also need a tape measure, scissors, a tapestry needle or a darning needle. Once you've gotten all of your supplies together, let's jump right in and get started. To begin the hat, which we're going to be working from the top down, we're going to start with a magic ring. For a magic ring, you want to hold the tail of your yarn in one hand, and wrap the yarn around, cross it over, See how the yarn makes an X here? Let me zoom in a little bit closer so you guys can see. There we go. And I like to hold the yarn under my pinky to keep my tension consistent. And you're just going to put your hook underneath both strands to grab the working yarn and pull it through. Now we're going to chain two one, two. So to do our first round, including the chain two, we're going to do 10 double crochets into this magic ring. Your chain two will not count as a stitch for the duration of this pattern, but it's important to keep you from having a gap in between the beginning and end of your rows. So double crochet, you yarn over, put it through the ring, yarn over and pull up a loop. So now you have three on your hook, yarn over one more time, go through the middle two, yarn over once more, go through the last two. So that is your first double crochet yarn over, through the loop, yarn over, yarn over one more time, pull through your center two, make sure you don't miss any of the plies of the yarn because sometimes it will split, yarn over, pull through the last two. So you've got your first two, I'm going to show you slow one more time and then just go through the rest of the row. If you're feeling like you need some more practice on the stitches and you're not super confident with your double crochets quite yet, I have a beginner's crochet crash course 101 tutorial video that shows you all of the basic stitches and will give you some more time to practice them. So third double crochet, yarn over, through the loop, Yarn over, pull up another, yarn over so there's four on the hook, go through the center two, yarn over once more, and through the last two. So now we've got three, and we've got seven more to do. going to go through them and you take your time and meet me at the end of the row. And 
and as I go I like to adjust my stitches so that they're snug against each other. Even tighten the ring a little bit. Now there are 10 double crochets in the ring. Remember the chain two doesn't count, so you'll see there's actually 11 bumps there. So now that we're at the end of the row, going to tighten up the magic ring, which means just grab your little tail from when you made it in the first place, and just gently tug. And as you can see, the circle in the center shrinks. Now with using a hook this big with worsted weight yarn, you are going to have a small hole that will be left in the center here. If you pull it down too tight, it's gonna scrunch up your stitches funky and it's gonna bubble weird, but the good news is if that tiny little hole bothers you, you can always make a pom-pom to put on top of it and nobody will know. So now to end round one, we are going to slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet. We're pretty much skipping over the chain two. It's just going to make it seem a lot neater as you go. So for a slip stitch, you just put your hook through the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and instead of working it any farther, you just go right through the other loop on the hook. So now you've completed round one. To start round two, we are going to chain two. We're going to put two stitches right into the same space where we made our chain two. We're actually going to put two double crochets into each space all the way around until the end. So at the end of this row, you should end up with 20 double crochet stitches. Somebody's dog is going absolutely nuts right now. I don't know whose it is, but it's not ours. It's a few blocks over, judging from the echo. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. So now we've reached the end of row two and we have 20 double crochet stitches. As before, we're just going to slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet to join the round. And that is the end of round two. Starting round three, 
going to chain two as before. We're going to do one double crochet into the first stitch and two double crochets into the next stitch. So the repeating pattern for round three is going to be one double crochet and the next stitch gets two double crochets. One double crochet. And two double crochets into the next stitch. Now we've come to the end of round three and you should have 30 double crochet stitches all the way around. So we're going to do our slip stitch to join into the top of that first double crochet. Going to chain two to start off round four. We're going to do one stitch one double crochet right into the same spot that our chain two is attached to. Going to do one double crochet into the second stitch. Then we're going to do two double crochets into the third. So the repeating pattern for this round is going to be one double crochet, one double crochet, two double crochets. The way I think of it in my head as I'm doing each round is just one, one, two. Because rather than counting the stitches through the entire row, I tend to just keep track of which stitch I'm working on at that moment. So one more time, one double crochet in the next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch, and two double crochets in that third stitch. I'm going to be repeating that for the rest of round four. So pause the video here and I will meet you back once you've finished it up. So now we have reached the end of round four and you should have 38 double crochet stitches. You should be ending on one double crochet rather than your increased stitch, which would have two. So you're going to slip stitch into the top of that first double crochet to join the round four. We're almost done with our increases everybody, hang in there. Once we get through two more rows, we're to easy street where all you do is one stitch in every stitch all the way around until the hat's the size you want it to be. So round five, start off with chain two double crochet right into that same stitch. Also into the next stitch and the third stitch. So our first three stitches each have one double crochet and the fourth stitch is going to be our increase stitch where we do two double crochet. So one more time, the pattern for this round is 
one double crochet, one double crochet, one double crochet, and your increase which has two. So in line with the way I think of the stitches as I'm going along in a row, one, 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 two. That's the pattern you're going to repeat all the way around until you get back to the end. So pause the video here and I will meet you back once row five is finished. So we are now at the end of row five and you should have 47 double crochet stitches. I know this is a funky number, but trust me, it's all going to work out just fine. And as you can see, the row will also be ending strangely. After your last increase stitch, you're only going to have two more stitch for stitch double crochets before you get to the end of your round. That's totally okay. It's going to work out just fine, I promise. So as always, we'll slip stitch to join to the top of the first double crochet to end off round five. Now we're going to chain two. And this is the start of round six, which is our last increase row. So we're going to double crochet right into that same spot as the first chain stitch. Double crochet into the second, third, and fourth stitch. And the fifth stitch is going to be our increase stitch. Where you will do two double crochets. So one more time. One, 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 and two. So the pattern repeat for this row is double crochet into four stitches and then two double crochets into the fifth stitch. Going to do that as with all the other rounds before it all the way around to the end. And that is going to be our last increase row. So pause the video here and meet me at the end of this row. So we are at the end of row six, which is our last increase row. Yay! You should have 56 double crochet stitches. And as with the last increase round, you will see your last increase stitch. Two double crochets into one stitch is followed by two solo stitch for stitch double crochets. So now we are going to join our round to the first double crochet of it. And now for the fun and easy part. This is the part of the hats that I enjoy the most. Chain two, as always, double crochet into the same space as your chain two. And now you're just going to do one double crochet in each stitch all the way around. You are going to repeat this until your hat is as long as you want it to be. Now, the best way to measure this, in my opinion, this is where the measuring tape comes into play. To show you the easiest way to measure it, I'm going to take the hat so far and fold it in half, matching up the full rows since I just started another one. So here's what it looks like so far. I'm going to take our tape measure, I'm going to place it in the center top 
and all the way to the bottom. Right now the hat is about three and eh, we'll just say it's three inches right now. Which means that our gauge is dead on at about half an inch per row of double crochet. So six rows equals three inches at half an inch each. Most normal hats you want them to be about eight inches from top to bottom of the brim. In order to make this a slouchy hat, I will usually make the body eight inches long and then add the brim for two rows, which will make it approximately nine inches. And that size of a hat is going to fit most male and female adults. If you are making this hat for someone with an extraordinarily large skull, you might want to do one more increase row, but not do too many extra increase stitches. I would say to do an increase stitch about every eighth stitch for another slightly bigger size. So rather than having you sit here and watch me go through multiple more rows, I will meet you back here once you have your hat as long as you want it to be, and I will tell you how many rows I have done to achieve the size that I have got it at. So pause the video here and just keep on hooking. And as you can see, we finally finished our hat. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 rows all together. And this is the last increase row that we did. And I added 10 more rows of work after that row. So we're going to flip it over and get started on our brim. This is how our seam is looking. And it sticks out a little bit with the color, but I usually put it at the bottom of the hat. So nobody's going to see it anyway. We're going to start off our brim with a chain two. And our next stitch will be a front post double crochet. So you're going to go around the body of the stitch from the front, behind it, and out the other side. Draw up a loop, yarn over, go through your middle two, yarn over through the last two just like a normal double crochet. The next will be a back post double crochet stitch going from the back of the work around the front of the stitch and to the back again. As you can see, I squeeze the stitch together. I think it makes it a little bit easier to do and a touch less awkward. We're going to be repeating front post double crochet and back post double crochet alternating around the whole rest of the row. Next comes a back post double crochet. And because this stitch is kind of funky, I will leave a link down in the description box to a few video tutorials that helped me learn how to properly execute this stitch, just in case I'm going a little bit too fast. And I am going to be speeding up the video in a minute here once I've done a few more stitches, because sitting here watching me do the whole row would just be way too much. There we go. There are some days that I really wish I could crochet that fast. And sometimes when I've had too much coffee, it feels like I really am crocheting that fast. Thank you. 
And now we are near the end of the row. So I'm just going to show you the last few stitches. This is another front post double crochet. Followed by a back post double crochet. And once we get through these last few stitches, you're going to slip stitch into the top of the first front post double crochet, as always, bypassing the beginning chain two. And the last stitch in your row should be a back post double crochet. Then you do your slip stitch and your chain two. Your first, your first stitch will be a front post double crochet. And it's going to be a lot easier to do this whole row because your front post double crochets will actually be protruding, giving the ribbed effect. And your back post double crochets will be recessed. Now we've reached the end of the row, so we are going to slip stitch into the top of that front post double crochet, the first one again to join the round. And now the actual crochet work is done, but we want to measure and make sure that our hat is the length we want it to be before snipping the yarn. So grab your tape measure. You want to make sure your tape measure is centered from top to the bottom of your magic ring and it looks like it came out to about 9 inches, which is perfect. That's the length that we wanted. And as you can see, this is the ribbed effect we were looking for and that's going to hold the hat in place on your head. So we're going to grab our scissors and snip our yarn, leaving about a 6 to 8 inch tail for weaving in. Then we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, pull the yarn through and through the last loop on the hook and pull it all the way through to finish it off so that it's not going to unravel. Now we're going to grab our tapestry needle and thread it so that we can weave in our ends. Going to go through that same stitch that we just did our last slip stitch in to get the yarn to the back of the work. I always like to weave my ends in through the back portions of the stitch that won't show from the front. And I like to go back through and do a almost pull the yarn all the way through but leave a little loop and go back through it with your yarn and pull it tight so it leaves a sort of not quite knot but it gives you a little bit of extra security so your work is much less likely to unravel in the future especially after multiple machine washes. One of the joys of acrylic yarn is that it is machine washable, which is fantastic, especially when, like me, you have kids and things get dirty. Wouldn't it be great if we could actually weave in ends that quickly? Nobody would ever complain about having to do it, because before you know it, it would be completely done. Now give it a tug and snip your yarn off. And as you can see, it's virtually undetectable. So we're going to grab our yarn end that is in the center of our magic ring and get that woven in as well. So thread your needle, and I like to go through the first and sometimes also second stitch of the round when tying in the end of a magic circle. And then go through the backs of a few other stitches, do a few of my half knots. 
and just keep going until it is woven into your satisfaction. then pull it off, give all your stitches a tug, and snip the yarn. Turn your hat right side out. And your essential, and your ultimate essential slouch beanie is complete. So this is the ribbed brim that we were wanting to achieve, but there's another way to do your edging that I will not show the step-by-step -step in this tutorial, but I will show it to you just to give you an idea of what it looks like. This is my favorite hat ever, made with more Deborah Norville's Everyday Yarn in the Lava colorway, and the brim is made with three rows of single crochet through the back loop only. The brim on it is not as long as a front post, back post, double crochet row. But as you can see, it gives an interesting effect in a more horizontal ribbed fashion. And this hat has been through multiple washes and the colors are just as vibrant as they were when I bought the yarn and made the hat. Here's a little side-by-side -side comparison for you, just to show you the differences. I hope you all like this tutorial. Leave questions or comments down below, and I will catch you all next time. Good luck and much success making your hats. Bye!